please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may now be seated. Coming up with today's show, we meet with two girls' tennis members and a look at what the hip-hop team is up to. We also put the spotlight on one of West Ranch's own volleyball players. Good morning, cats. I'm Josie Leonetti. And I'm Luke Miotto. Today is Wednesday, November 4th, and West Ranch TV starts right now. Welcome back. Clubs meeting at lunch today include a mandatory link meeting in Ms. Reeves' room 542 and score in room 306. Future Nurses of America in room 307, WAC will be meeting at brunch in room 211, Chess and Droughts Club in room 212, and lastly, Compassion Club at brunch in Mr. Holland's room 407. Community service is a great way to get back to the community while also boosting up your own resume. Those in need of community service hours can donate an unwrapped toy worth $10 or more for one hour or donate two toys for two hours of service for NHS and Key Club. Toys can be brought to room 308 or 311 during tutorial or brunch. The drive will end on December 4th. Special thanks to everyone who donates to these great causes, including everyone who helped with the Defiat donation this past month. Over 200 socks were donated to the homeless during the Defiat's October event. There are many animals in need of our help, and ASB will be hosting a donation drive through Friday the 18th for the cats and dogs of the Castaic Animal Shelter. They will be accepting donations as NHS hours, and students may earn up to two service hours, which can be turned into the ASB office. From helping furry friends to humans, CSF will be collecting canned or boxed food for the food pantry in room 303 on Thursday and Friday. Students must bring at least three items to earn credit. Our West Ranch Hip Hop team is helping their community through dance. Now I'll take it over to Abby, who's here live with two of the team captains. Abby Thanks, Josie. I'm here with two members from our very own hip hop team. Thank you guys for coming. Thank Thanks you for having us. So Sky Island, I, what do you guys do in hip hop club? We teach new members how to dance and we prepare for rallies. And you guys have always been a highlight of the rally. So what are you guys doing to keep that tradition going? We practice every Tuesday and Thursday from three to five in the dance room and we teach three dances to new members and we just clean and get ready for the rally, which is December 13th. And Krizel, I understand that you guys are having a fundraiser. Can you explain what it is for and how students can get involved? So Hip Hop is having a fundraiser called GoFundMe and it's a simple fundraiser that allows everyone to easily donate as much money as they can. You can literally donate like 10 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, five dollars or ten dollars or even go higher. By doing so, it will give hip hop an opportunity to buy better costumes and even have t-shirts that represent hip hop. To donate, you can go to our Instagram or Twitter account and there's a link there and you can just click it. Well, that's really cool. Thank you guys for coming and make sure you go out and support your hip hop team. That's it for me, now back to Josie. Thank you, Abby. Today when you stepped on campus, I'm sure you all noticed the massive drop in temperature. In order to help you prepare for the chill, our weather reporter Justin is here with the midweek forecast. Thanks Josie. What's up Wildcats? Justin here with a weather forecast. So obviously it's been pretty cold recently, but if you think about it, is it really that cold? I mean the rest of the nation is literally suffering below freezing temperatures, and we're here in Southern California dressed up in parkas and sweatpants complaining in 70 degree weather. But nonetheless, for today's weather forecast, temperatures will peak at 67 degrees and slowly warm up throughout the rest of the week until we hit Saturday and Sunday where it'll reach 78 and 75 degrees. Also, for all of you snowboarders and skiers out there, don't forget that tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, Mammoth Mountain will open. If you take a look at the picture behind me, this is the most recent picture of all the snowfall that Mammoth Mountain has received. With over 12 inches of snow in the past two days, this is something that you definitely don't want to miss out on. That's all from me, now let's take it back to Josie. Thanks, Justin. Maybe if you don't want to be attracting the weather, you can be doing anything from forensics to working with animals. 
If careers like these interest you, you can take the College and Career Readiness and ROP classes in these specialties this upcoming spring semester. You can explore even more career options while also earning between 5 and 10 credits per semester. CCR and ROP classes will fill up very quickly, so make sure to see Mrs. Oakley in the ROP office to sign up and get started on your future. Some cats are skipping the ROP classes and choosing to use their extra time for fitness and competition. Nothing is stopping our Wildcats from dominating on the court. To fill you in on our girls' tennis team's upcoming match, let's take it out to Ruben, who's live in the studio with some of the girls. Ruben? Thanks, Luke. I'm here with the girls' varsity tennis players Brittany Wall and Corey Raffish. Thanks for coming out. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. Now, Brittany, um, with CIF playing today, uh, are there any strategies that you didn't apply in league that you will be applying for today's match? Yeah, since the CIF league is a harder competition, we had to switch up our lineup a little bit just to get some more games. Okay, great. And Corey, usually playing doubles throughout the season, uh, now playing singles for CIF, uh, how have you been adapting to that change? I've been practicing both singles and doubles throughout the season, so I'm excited to get the opportunity to play in CIF. Great. Now, Brittany, uh, is there anything else you want to tell you, uh, to your teammates out there for today's CIF match? Yeah, so this is where all our hard work is going to pay off, so we're just hoping to grab this win and play Friday. All right, thank you so much. Uh, good luck to both of you today. Thank That's you, all for me now. Let's take it back to the hosts. Thank you, Ruben. We wish the best of luck to the team today. Tennis is an only sport with athletes who give it their all, and one student athlete on campus is certainly familiar with the concept of putting in 110%. Despite all odds, my co-anchor Josie has more. Here at West Ranch, student athletes are not hard to come across. But among the sea of football players and soccer stars, one student stands out amongst the pack. West Ranch senior and varsity volleyball player, Janessa Chase. I've been playing volleyball since I was about eight years old and been doing club for about four years. On the surface, she seems to be just an average volleyball player. But once you look closer, once you get to know her, you see she's no average athlete. Uh, I was three years old when I was diagnosed. After staying with her grandparents one night, Chase started experiencing an unquenchable thirst, which her dad knew to be a sign of diabetes. She was diagnosed only a few days later. Literally 100% of the time, I have to be focused on what my body is doing and what my blood sugar is. It's really hard just in general trying to balance everything. Uh, it's a constant struggle between exercise, lowering my blood sugar, and then having to take food to raise it up, and then being too high to play, and then being too low to play, and having to try and keep it in the middle while also trying to stay active and stay doing what I want to do. Chase's ability to manage both her disease and her sport is certainly a challenge, but not one that she has failed to overcome. My blood sugar is high. I can definitely tell that it affects the way I play. So sometimes it can be frustrating because it's like, I really want to play, but my blood sugar is too low and I, can like, I can't hold the pencil, I can't write. How am I supposed to play volleyball? So that's struggling, a struggle because then I have to sit out, which is hard for me. It isn't only the work she's doing on the court, but the work she's doing off within the diabetes community, which she is most proud of. I'm involved with a lot of different organizations. I'm involved with JDRF, and I was a youth ambassador for the Los Angeles chapter two years ago. And then I'm also a part of a group called Padre, and I work with their youth leader program, which is basically just a bunch of teen diabetics working together and trying to raise awareness about diabetes and trying to fundraise to find research and get all the diabetics together so that we can have a sense of community and know that we aren't alone. Janessa has played volleyball for six years and has played at West Ranch for four years. Chase has never known a life without diabetes, but it is because of her closeness to it that she is able to see past its dangers and difficulties and day in and day out put 100% into not only helping her team, but helping her own fight to continue and play the sport she loves. For West Ranch TV, this has been Josie Leonetti reporting. Stay tuned in tomorrow's show for a meeting with the cross-country team as they go into their last league meet of the season. And as a reminder, tomorrow is a minimum day and seventh period will end at 1230. Thanks for watching, Cats.